I just play what the innkeeper asks. We need his coin to travel north. You're here about food. Take it up with that bleeding runt by the chantry. I got other gear to sell. A whole mess of refugees come in and leave near every night. All have hungry bellies, sad tails, and mementos for barter. I sold that bleeding merchant outside about half my larder two weeks back, and now he's charging outrageous sums for all my food. You did? Well, I don't know what to say to that. Thanks. do that for you. Speak. What now? I'll have no fighting in my kitchen. Out with you. I'm scared. When are we going home? Cousin in the Templars. He says the mages in the tower out on Lake Callanhard are all turning into demons. They always say that, though. Well, this time it's true. They're not sure what to do about it yet, he says. What's to do? I thought you killed them. Easier said than done. Mages pick a fine time to go turning into demons, I tell you. Yes? 
Lothering? I think it started as a settlement by the river, and then grew when it became the place where two roads met. There are always people in Lothering, but many are just passing through. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I have had dreams. This was... different somehow. When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rosebush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Yes? Well, here I am. Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world, they treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. What do you wish of me? We are hardly alone, so privacy is not an option. It is your question, however. Ask what you will. What do you wish of me? If you must. My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes, by Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. I am unsure. I was too young to understand, and perhaps it was bravado on Flemeth's part, or perhaps she was merely amused. I will never know. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait, <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. It was a game, and I a young girl. If I didn't get to play, I would have been very upset. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere, and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. You do not know. The Zealots use that word for any magic they do not control. 
The Chantry sees any mages not leashed to the circle of magi as apostates, and apostates could become maleficarum, evil mages that resort to blood magic and become demon-enslaved abominations. It may even be true. Still, those of us who prefer freedom see no reason to submit. Thank you for small favors, then, at the very least. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. Yes. Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? My fruit? I... I... I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. The Chantry does not pride, and you should. I desired time apart from the world. I was a traveling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. What do you wish of me? If you must. I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike, dragging the young boy kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. So I assume... My mother has walked the wilds far longer than I. Who am I to suggest what things she has done and not done in her past? Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. There were nights when the wilds called to me, it is true. You look upon the world around you and you think you know it well. I have smelled it as a wolf, listened as a cat, prowled shadows that you never dreamed existed. But my life is as a human. I am under no illusions to the contrary. They do not shy away from me. To their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus they cannot speak, even were I to ask. No? "'Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. "'There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, "'despite what those mages would have you believe. "'Some of these traditions are old, indeed, "'passed down as carefully guarded law from one generation to the next. "'The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could, "'but as luck have it, some still exist. "'My mother is such a one.' Not all apostates use the forbidden blood arts. 
maleficarum do, but to condemn all who do not fall under the circle's thrall for the sake of what might be is a dangerous path to walk. There are those who look on the word apostate as meaning freedom. Anyone with sufficient will, but the act of transformation is a magical one. Tis a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. If you had a notion to learn such a skill for yourself, sadly, you must remain disappointed. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? A most practical opinion. Far more so than any man I have spoken to. But enough of such talk. Let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. Yes? Well, here I am. Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Which one? It will come to you soon, I'm sure. What do you need? Ask away. Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Oh, there you go, listening to me again. You'd think you'd have gotten past that already. I ended up in the Chantry, sure, but I didn't start there. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him any more for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. I know who I was told was my father. He died even before my mother did, anyhow. It isn't important. Ah Lehman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence, I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Arl came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. And raised my dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Caelan's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. <laughs>